Hi everybody, uh, this is Scott Blurton here. Um, thank you for joining me today. I just wanted to take the opportunity to give you the latest update on what we've been working on for the last four or five years called the Canvasser. Uh, our last date was in August 2019 and we've had a lot of changes since then. Uh, first and foremost, I got married. Bring! Uh, and uh, with my wife, we bought a house and we moved in. Um, and we sort of did that in January and we took some time to get everything together. Uh, and, but we're finally settled in and it's a wonderful house, um, house of my dreams. It's turned out really well. Um, and in the meantime, what we've done is we've continued to work on the movie. We have gotten the, uh, cut almost the final port where it's almost at final cut or, or what we call video lock. Um, that's where you stop making changes and you just let it sit. And that allows you to create, um, the audio sound effects fully um ambience and of course uh, music um, because we're not quite fully there yet um, i didn't get an opportunity because of the pandemic to show it to my production team there may be a possibility of a few uh other cuts that we might have to make but for the most part the color grain i would say is 99 percent done there's just a couple shots that look just kind of a little weird special effects are done which might have a couple shots we just replace uh, and of course, we might have to do, do the credits, but for the most part, we're pretty much ready to go on to the sound. And considering that I didn't have the opportunity to um, put together like the actual video lock, I didn't want to do the audio editing just yet because uh, it's heavily based on synchronization, making sure that the sound hits the right spot in the video. And considering that there might be changes, I didn't really want to play around with that too much. Now, instead, what I'm doing is I said turn my attention to the soundtrack, uh, the score. Uh, we decided a long time ago that probably for the canvasser, well, the, probably the best we could do would be to write a film score for it. Um, and because we don't really have a lot of film budget or um, a budget, uh, I've had to take down that responsibility myself. Now I'm gonna sh minimize this here, this little window here until I'm in the corner. There you go. And let's see here, thank you. There you go. And we're editing in Final Cut Pro, excuse me, <laughs> Logic Pro X. And for the most part, we've, we're doing it through uh, contact. Now, for example, uh, I managed to pick up last year a really nice keyboard. I want to show this to you without yanking it out of the socket, so I'm just going to do this very carefully. There it says here, it is a complete controller. Uh, has these little cool lights on it, which you can see. And that's been really useful for me because, as you may, uh, for those that know me, I have zero background in music. So I really need all the help you can get. And the lights are useful in that sense um, to help me with, uh, say, key signatures, uh, know what uh, keys are in the, uh, what, what, uh, what keys are in the key that I cho choose, um, as well as when I do chord progressions, it makes it a lot easier because I don't have a lot of technical skill in piano. Uh, I can use this and set um, black keys to white keys and just play simple triads and then go back later and after, and then adjust them into the right place. You have the ability to sort of, um, what's the word we're looking for, in contact, uh, you have the ability to sort of assign or, um, I don't know what it's, it's called a key signature or scale, to set the scale. Uh, we've done a lot of that. And what we've done here is we've had a number of different libraries that I've been buying or collecting whenever they come on sale. Um, the first one, that I want to pull up is uh, I picked up a it was Albion One. Let's see if you can see it here uh, an example. Well, you can see all the instruments on the left. Uh, here's an example of Albion One. I'm just going to pull it up real quick here and show this to you. There we go. Um, uh, this is was highly recommend for people starting out. Basically, what it is is it's a bunch of what they call ensemble uh, patches. Uh, these are a combination of different instruments. So in this case, these are long strings with and the articulation is long. So they combine the different strings together. And I start off with that. And then as part of that deal, I also picked up this one, uh, which is Aperture Strings. Excuse me, I'm gonna select that and pull that up. There we go, that's Aperture Strings playing in contact. Um, this has been really useful. It creates a much different sound and it's uh, saved me a lot of time in order to put these together because you don't have to do a lot of sound engineering. Uh, as we moved forward, I needed more and more of a broader orchestra. And I had a couple of options that I wanted to choose from. The first was Altera Imperial Nucleus, which is here. And I'll just pull up this one as an example. And this is what it looks like inside Contact. 
this one came highly recommended from Music Tech. I think it may be a Canadian company, although I'm not entirely sure. And it really came down to this and Spitfire Audio's BBC Orchestra. And when I made that decision to purchase it, uh, this one was about four or five hundred dollars, and it was much smaller. It was about twenty gigabytes in size, whereas the BBC uh, Symphony Orchestra, which is released just last year by Spitfire Audio, uh, they were selling it, and it was something on the range of six hundred gigabytes. And it came in on its own hard drive, and they actually re recommended that you have a second computer just to run it, which really wasn't feasible for us. Um, plus, it had twenty mic positions which we didn't, I, I didn't really understand how that works. So I decided to go to Alter Imperio because it was just BBC uh, Symphony Orchestra was just far beyond what I was capable of using. Um, after about a month, however, after I bought uh, the Altera Imperio Nucleus, and it's been working really well for us, they came out with a um, core and discover versions of the BBC Orchestra. Uh, and so what they did is with the core especially, they shrunk it down to one mic position and they shrunk it down to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, 20 gigabytes. It's really small. And you can see here, just to give an example of how, what, what, um, it's going to take a moment here, I think. There we go. What type of ensembles, uh, sorry, instruments you get. They don't really have ensembles with this one, unlike uh, Nucleus, but they have really, uh, basically an entire orchestra. And uh, it really sounds good. Um, but you'll see the major difference when I go through this section. You'll see, you can actually hear the difference between the Alteria Imperial Nucleus and the BBC Symphony Orchestra from Spitfire Audio. Um, in fact, I'll, and we'll talk about that after. Now, the section I'm going to play for you today is we're going to go through this. Uh, I'm going to have to sync it up with um, the um, audio separately because it. Uh, I'm using QuickTime Player to record this and you can't record the computer audio. So I'm going to listen here on my microphone and then add it in later in file cut and then upload to YouTube. Um, and I want to show you this section because this was a 12 minute section in about uh, 27, 26 minutes into the movie. Uh, and it's a really important section. It was something that we, it's a 12 minute exposition scene in which um, Vilmer Pasternak, the actor who, actress who played uh, Marie Vachon's, uh, takes on uh, the main character protagonist, Devin Shire's uh, flagging campaign. And But before she does so, she walks him through how you run a municipal campaign and how you take advantage of human psychology in order to try and build political support. Now, when we first wrote this scene, it was originally 25 pages and a lot of technical stuff, and it was really, really dry. and It was really... Dance, and we cut it down to about 12 minutes. And we knew from the, at that point we were really going to have to work hard to try and make it a little bit more exciting. It was, so the, we knew the audience was going to kind of flag in this. So we did a couple things. One is we constantly moved scene locations and we did wish pans between those scenes. And even then, uh, it still flags. So when I came to the score, I knew this is probably going to be the most important, one of the most important sections of the score. And it was going to have to have the score, the, the music was going to have to provide a sense of propulsion to the movie. It was going to have to have a sense of rhythm. It was going to have to have a fast pace. It was going to have to be in, engaging in a way that try and keep people interested. Uh, and for the most part, I think we did a pretty decent, I think I did a pretty decent job of it. However, you have to remember that as I'm doing this, I have zero musical experience. I have zero um, theory work in music theory. Um, zero experience in composition. The most music experience I've ever had is I played trombone in high school band. And that's about it. And listened to a lot of movie soundtracks when I was growing up. So to get to this point, for me, it's actually pretty extraordinary. Uh, we watched a lot, I watched a lot of YouTube. I watched a lot of like general theory and how you put together soundtracks. And I'm pretty proud of what I was able to put together for this. Uh, there's just a couple of provisos. Now, you have to remember that this is still pretty early. And it's with the orchestra, it's not mixed really uh, well. We haven't done a lot of mixing and mastering with this. So, And we're going to put it straight with the uh, movie dialogue, and we're not going to balance between them. So there will be times when the music may overwhelm the uh, dialogue. And, or the dialogue may overwhelm the music. It's, um, that, that's going to be fixed in the final cut, and we're going to make a lot of changes. Um, but for the most part, 
So don't worry too much about that. Just try and listen to the music. And this will give you an idea of what we're doing. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that um, because I'm not the experienced composer, there might be times when it doesn't quite work in the way that you expect a movie. Usually with a comedy, a film soundtrack kind of takes a back seat. In this one, we're trying to use it to push the pace forward, push the momentum of the, the movie. Uh, as a result, there might be certain jokes that the music kind of... Um, dilutes that make the jokes don't really work because the music doesn't really work in that particular scene and all things considered i think it's a decent trade-off and we might make some changes as we go forward but for the most part I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out now those are the two major instruments and essentially there's about seven sections to this piece this 12 minute piece and you will hear if you're looking to the instruments um, you'll hear the difference when alter imperial nucleus kind of fades out and the BBC Symphony Orchestra fades in, and we can chat with that a little bit after. But for the most part, uh, let's go ahead and listen to the 12 minutes, and I'll make small comments during the video. Uh, you should be able to see the full spread right here, and I'll try and talk you through exactly what's going on a little bit, but I don't want to bother you when you're listening to this. Uh, hopefully this will give you an idea of how the production of the canister is going and how it's turning out. Okay, ready? Uh, I'm going to count down to three because i got to synchronize, synchronize this later with the actual audio that's coming from Logic Pro. So I'm going to count down for three and then play. So three, two, one. You don't respect what people like me do, do you? I wish I could do what you do, but I guess there's just some things I'm not capable of. You'd be surprised what you're capable of. Like me, for example, I've been in this line of work for a long time, and no one has gotten under my skin like you have. I'm sorry. Lucky for you, the only thing I hate more than losing is quitting. Well, actually, you haven't even started yet. Shut up. Yes, ma'am. I went home, and I looked for any political communications book that I could find, and I couldn't find anything until I stumbled upon these. What are those? They're books. No, I mean the barcode that's glued on the cover. <gasps> Did you steal these from the library? Uh, it's a long-term loan. But aren't they gonna miss them? That's not important right now. What's important is this question. How does politics work? Well, candidates present themselves to voters and tell them what they wanna do. The voters consider their options and choose the best candidate. So voters use logic to make a rational decision? Well, what else would they use? Congratulations. That's why you're a loser. Y you call me that a lot. Stay focused. When I told you that the best strategy is to go on to the attack, you said no. Why? I didn't want to do it. Would it help you win? Yeah. Why are you so reluctant to do what is necessary? Well, it didn't feel right. Feel right? Congratulations, Devin. You just summarized 20 years of cognitive science into two words. Huh? Weston discovered that your brain is not directed by what you think. It's guided by what you feel. Do you know why everyone runs negative election campaigns? Because they're the most effective? No, because they're the easiest. Negative attacks target the one emotion in our brain that's always just below the surface. Fear. <laughs> From the beginning, humanity has been besought on all sides by danger, violence, and death. Our fear has kept us alive, and it is our fear that leaves us vulnerable to manipulation. History is full of perfectly nice people doing the most horrendous things, all because of fear. But don't worry, there's something far more powerful than fear. Think about it. Throughout our existence, Humanity has been consumed by misery through famine, pestilence, war, death. In the face of such agony, how did we find the strength to keep going? I don't know. Hope is the most powerful emotion we have. It's capable of driving people to sacrifice their lives for the ones they love, to move thousands of miles from their homes in search of opportunity, to stand against injustice when no one else will. Hope is our savior, and we're going to turn you into a candidate of hope. <sighs> this is going to be harder than I thought. Now, just trying to appeal to emotion pick up the emotion is not enough. 
Hope for what? Fear of what? It has to be tied to something. Fear is easy. Bad guy is a threat to you. Vote for us. And we'll stop them. Hope is also far more difficult to activate. It has to be connected to something greater. A promised land, a more perfect union, a just society, a future that just feels right. George Lakoff realized that politics was not a battle of ideas, but a struggle to define right and wrong, good versus evil. Nucleus, when Martin uh, six Luther King Legato. Jr. said, I have a dream, it was in the dream that mattered. What mattered was that it was a place where people would be judged not by the color of their LBN skin, Strings. but by the content of their character. His dream simplified what was right and wrong. But what does that have to do with me? Right and wrong. Morality is emotionally compelling to us. If we want to round you as the candidate of hope, we're going to have to build a moral utopia. How? Simple. Metaphor. Connect Four? I love this game. No, Telephone. not Connect BBC Four. So. Metaphor. A Same with the timpani hits. Speech that says two things are the same. If humans encounter something that they don't understand, they try to compare it to something that they do understand. Effective politics. Those are violins. Know how to Let take double advantage up with of this. But how can you change how people feel? Let me give you an example. Are you in favor of an estate tax? Shelly Spigato? Well, Spicato. estates are for rich people, and rich people should pay their fair share, so yeah, I support that. Are you in favor of a death tax? Well, no, you shouldn't pay taxes for dying. That doesn't seem fair. Devin, they're the same thing. Well, no, one is, and the other is, <gasps> no. Very good, Bernard. That's devious. Actually, it's really quite simple. You just have to find words that work. But we're going to go one better. Well, what do you mean? You're facing an incumbent who has been developing an emotional bond with her solo violin? for over 20 years. You have less than 60 days to create an emotional bond that is more powerful. It needs to be simple, something that feels right in their bones. We need to turn you into a metaphor. What? What was one of the first things you said to me? Hello? Solo cello. Okay, that was the very first thing. But what was the second? I asked you, why were you running? And you said... Yes. Everyone gets their Audio chance. Audio That's Nicholas, right. And here comes Everyone uh, gets their chance. You were using it as an excuse. But I think it's much more than that. Yeah, you can really hear Everyone, the difference. Everyone, at least once in their life, has been you. We've all felt stupid, unsatisfied, unremarkable. That's enough. Down on our luck. Charmless, weak. Please stop. Incompetent and disenfranchised. Violas um, from the BBC SO? Your life is a metaphor of how each of us feels at some point in our lives. You have Violence? no skills, no job prospects, and nothing to offer. Of all the people in the city who have the least cost for hope, and yet here you are running for city council. A job far above your competence and against insurmountable odds. That takes an extraordinary amount of hope. That's going to be the center of your campaign. We are going to turn you into the candidate of hope. How are we going to do that? I'm glad you asked. Every campaign can be simplified for the Salad voter phone. in four simple steps. Hi, my name is Devin Shire, and I'm running for city council. Step one, your Choice message. Pagato. It needs to be a simple principle that and string everybody bases can from the BBC SO. And it's going to be Pizzicato and Spigato from the Shelly. Because you're going to say it a lot. Thankfully, we already have it. I'm fighting for a city where everyone gets their chance. Step two, your biography. Your biography tells voters your story and shows them how your personal experience supports your message. But I haven't really done anything. Not yeah, true. I've watched your god-awful YouTube videos. You have a great story to tell. I do? 
Like what? Like this. I came to Ottawa seven years ago to build a career and pursue my dreams in the heart of our nation's capital. So the violas and the oboe are carrying the melody? And I failed miserably. Uh, I'm jobless, homeless, and essentially hopeless. Wait, what? I, I don't want to say that. Who is On better flute, positioned legato? to represent those who have never gotten a chance? And a Someone celli. who has never gotten a oh, chance, sorry, of course. That's why people will vote for you. Violins because are taking they'll the rhythm. know you'll fight for them. My complete and utter inability to find professional employment makes me ideally suited to understand your concerns about the economy and fight for your interests on council. Can't we just skip the part where we tell everyone I'm a loser? Yeah, I'd appreciate it. I like this transition Absolutely and then not. the rumble is really it's nice. It's crucial to your message. <laughs> and it's really funny. I don't usually trust politicians. You look here to fail your house convinced me to trust you. Thank you, kind sir. Step three, your priority. You need to define what you are going to focus on. So we got the rhythm with the I would string basses and Shelly Spiccato, and Melody is string basses, Shelly Legato, Violet's Legato. By people who can make the hard decisions on what really matters. Well, how many priorities should I have? How many fingers on my hands? Five. Exactly. What? You think the decimal system was a system, but it was Oh, Bobo, clarinets, and, and bassoon. All oh, woodwinds are all in. Members. One direction. Quiet. We group things into fives and tens because we can count them on our fingers. You want voters to remember your priorities? Keep them to five. As your counselor, my priorities will be tackling youth unemployment, supporting early education and childcare, ending street harassment, protecting the environment, and building safe cycling networks. Those are excellent priorities. I'm impressed by people who can make the hard decisions on what really matters. You also kept them to five, thus making it easier for me to remember them. Set forth your policies. They support your priorities. They're necessary, even if the vast majority of your voters never read them. That doesn't make sense. Even though nobody reads them, policies give you good reasons. Be sure voters, you're smart enough to articulate what you want to do. And you'll also never know when voters would want more detail about your priorities. How will you improve bicycle safety? I will treat cyclists as piccolo. equal participants in the transportation network, improve snow removal for winter biking, and lead the charge to dedicate a portion of our gas tax to expanding our cycling infrastructure. Your detailed responses to subjects I care about to deeply impress me improves my first impressions of your competence and dramatically increases the probability that I will vote for you. That's well! Policies, priorities, biography, build on top of one another, will lead directly to your message. Every door you knock, every conversation you have, every speech you will make must finish with your message because it is the one thing you want voters to remember. Together, we can build a city where everyone gets their chance, even someone like me. Can I count on your support? Yes, yes you can. I like that message, it's so positive. That's great because you're going to use it everywhere. The front of your pamphlets, the homepage of your website, the end of your speeches, and even in your ads. We can afford ads? We can, on the internet. I'm not sure this is a good idea. You'll be fine. Just follow the script. Okay, so it's that covers the 12 minutes. Um, that took about a month of work from start to finish. Um, and considering <laughs> the complete and utter lack of any experience or expertise or training in music, I, I think it's actually going to do, uh, I think it works really well. Um, especially you could see towards the later section, you got a really nice sense of rumble from the BBC Symphony Orchestra's string basses. Um, they have a... Um, they, they just had this nice sense of rumble and that it seemed like it just started to roll. So as far as the uh, what the music's trying to do in this scene, I think it is successful. I think it's meant, it gives a sense of propulsion. It helps the audience avoid getting bored. Uh, actually, I'll start expanding this. Uh, and it also, um, it's just, it, it has a nice rhythm to it that you kind of just rumble and bounce through the entire thing. Um, as you can probably heard, you can really hear the difference between um, the Alteria Imperial Nucleus and the BBC Symphony Orchestra from Spitfire Audio. Um, 
they're both really good. Um, but what was really quite extraordinary I found with the BBCSO was that that really sense of dynamic, I, I, I just want to say dynamic range, um, because typically what you try and do with these, who my limited understanding, is you, they're samples, but you can uh, alter them by using faders and modulation wheels to try and make it sound more realistic. And what I found was with the Ontario Imperial, you, you tended to use both. You tended to change the volume, which they call expression, and you also change the dynamics, which is the uh, intensity of the note that's being played. And you'd have to move those sort of in concert to make it sound more realistic, whereas in Spitfire Audio's BBC SO, I could just move the dynamics and just play with that. And it gave this really sense of like, it really felt like a, uh, a real instrument and it really just sort of swelled up and down, especially on the cellies. Excuse me, the ch the, yeah, the celli, it sounded really, really good. And you can see that there's just, just more, it seems like there's more of a sound to it. Like there's just really good sense of rumble from the string basses. Um, as far as how it fits in the scene, I think it does a decent job. I think it's something that we can move on and I might come back and make some alterations. That last little bit, when it goes from the rhythm back to sort of like a long flotendo, flotendo notes from the uh, aperture ensembles, uh, I don't think it worked as well. I think I might just simply remove the strings and just repeat the, the rhythm with the woodwinds. But for the most part, I'm able to move on. Um, so far, I've gotten through about 41 minutes of the movie. Uh, that's not 41 minutes of music. That means you've gone through 40 minutes and tried to put music where you think it needs it. And for the most part, because, again, we're in micro-budget production, we're trying to do things in the shoestring as much as we can, we use music. Music has to serve a purpose. It just can't throw it in there because you know you're bored. Or in this case, for this 12-minute sequence where um, Marie Belchance is trying to explain the modern art of modern campaign, I actually think it works really well. Uh, but of course, it may change before the final production. Um, well, what we'll try and do is uh, I'll continue working on it for another month or so, uh, probably till July, and then get through the picture and try and get a placeholder for all the music I want to do. Then go back, make sure I've got the cut that I want, do the audio editing, uh, add Foley, add sound effects, add ambience, and then come back and then finish up the music and master those music tracks. Then I would go into the mastering process with the, um, the video and try and put together a final video. I'm hoping to get done by the end of the year. I do thank you very much for your patience. I know it's taken a long time, but um, basically if you want to do something as well as you can, it's going to take time. Uh, and to take in the time, especially to add music, I think it's going to add a lot of production value, and it's turning out way better than I expected. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for your patience. This is the update for now. I'll try and check in more often now that we have a more established space. We're not moving around. Um, <laughs> we have a little more stable now in our, our personal lives, so I hope that I can give you more updates in the canvasser and sh um, give you some good news by the end of the year. Thank you very much.